is Dusty Jones, here to talk about fractions in the Egyptian numeration system. Most of the information we know about Egyptian fractions comes from the Rhind Papyrus, which is also known as the Ames Papyrus. It has a couple of different names uh, for this reason. It was written by an Egyptian scribe named Ahmes or Amos around 1650 BC and it was a very long uh, rolled up scroll, 18 feet long and 13 inches wide. It was found by a Scottish scholar uh, with the last name of Rhind in 1858 AD uh, while he was looking around an antique shop uh, on vacation in Egypt. Egyptian fractions deal with unit fractions. A unit fraction is a fraction with a one in the numerator, like one half or one fourth or one over 144. An Egyptian fraction in general is the sum of distinct unit fractions. So they would write three fourths, which is not a unit fraction, as one half plus one fourth. They would not write it as one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth because those add ends are not distinct. So all of the denominators need to be different all of the numerators need to be equal to one. To write a unit fraction using Egyptian numerals, they placed this football-shaped hieroglyph uh, above a number uh, to represent the reciprocal of that number. Uh, so for example, the numeral three with this fraction hieroglyph above it meant one-third, and the numeral for ten uh, with a fraction hieroglyph above it would mean one-tenth. There were a couple of exceptions to this, some special symbols for a couple of different fractions. One half and two thirds that looked like this. In general, non unit fractions were written as the sum of distinct unit fractions, and the sums were indicated simply by writing the numerals next to each other. They didn't use a plus sign. So here, when they have uh, one fourth next to one-eighth, that means one-fourth plus one-eighth, or what we would write as three-eighths. And in this next example we have one-half plus one-tenth plus one-twelfth, which getting a common denominator of sixty sums to forty-one-sixtieths. A couple of reasons that we have for using unit fractions uh, using this sum of distinct unit fractions came about from a, a method for division uh, that we'll show, and it's also useful in comparing fractions to order them uh, from least to greatest or greatest to least. Here's an example. Let's say you've got five loaves of bread that you want to share fairly among eight workers. Maybe they've been helping you uh, farm along the Nile. How much bread will each worker get? We know that the answer is five-eighths of a loaf. Let me show you how we can use a division process to write five-eighths as the sum of unit fractions. So here I've drawn uh, five loaves of bread, and I want to share this among eight people. Uh, let's give everyone a half a loaf to start with. So I'll make some cuts here. And when I cut it this way, I get stuff for persons one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now, if I want to take this uh, last loaf I haven't cut yet and share it equally among eight people, uh, we can do that. Cut it into eighths, eight equal pieces. All the way, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and eight. So five loaves shared among eight people. Each person gets half a loaf and an eighth of a loaf.
when we use this process, we get 5 eighths equals 1 half plus 1 eighth, and this division method required fewer cuts uh, than dividing each loaf into eight pieces and giving each worker five pieces of bread. Here's some more examples. You can use the same method we did. What if you want to share three loaves fairly among four people? Or two loaves fairly among five people? Or four loaves among five people? Or 13 loaves among 12 people? I'll let you try those yourself. For three-fourths, I've got three loaves of bread here. I want to share this among four people. I can give each person half of a loaf. Person one, two, three, and four. So three-fourths is going to be one-half plus this last loaf. I can divide it fairly among four people. So three-fourths is one-half plus one-fourth. One way to take 13 loaves and divide it fairly among 12 people, in essence getting the fraction 13 12, would be to give everyone uh, a whole loaf and then take the final loaf and divide it into 12 equal pieces. So that if you take 13 loaves and divide it among 12 people, everyone gets one loaf and one twelfth of a loaf. This is not the only way to do it, and one of the reasons that's nice about this next way I'm going to show you is you don't have to cut one loaf into 12 equal pieces. Here again I've started with 13 loaves, but I'm going to give each person half a loaf to start with. That takes up six loaves. And next I'll take some loaves and cut them into pieces of size one-third. And divide it among the twelve. And finally, I'll take the remaining three loaves and divide them into pieces of size one-fourth. So that I get 13 loaves divided among 12 people. Each person gets one-half of a loaf and one-third of a loaf and one-fourth of a loaf. The Egyptians would have written the fraction four-fifths as this, the hieroglyph for one-half, a hieroglyph for one-fifth, and a hieroglyph for one-tenth. For our purposes, let's just write one-half plus one-fifth plus one-tenth. I said another benefit of unit fraction uh, representation was to compare fractions. We can see here that four-sevenths, seven-eighths, and ten-thirteenths are all greater than one-half because they all start with one-half plus something else. How can you see that four-sevenths is the least of these and seven-eighths is the greatest using this unit fraction decomposition? Some key points is that every fraction, any fraction you can think of, can be written as the sum of distinct unit fractions in this way that the Egyptians did. Another thing that you may not have thought about is every fraction actually has not only a few but an infinite number of ways to do this. One way to get different unit fraction representations is to change the size of the fraction we use, especially at the outset. For example, here's three-fifths and it's broken down into one-half plus one-tenth. I took three loaves of bread 
cut off pieces that were size one half, five of those, and then cut the remaining half into five equal pieces to give me the one tenth. If instead of starting with halves, I start with thirds, I take five thirds, and then I take the last loaf and cut it up into five pieces, so we have a third plus a fifth. Then I'll take that final third and divide it into five equal pieces to get one fifteenth. Or we could start with one thirds and get five of those, and then do one sixths, and after I get five sixths taken care of, I'm left with a half of a loaf that I divide into five equal pieces to get one tenth. So here's three different representations for three fifths. Another way to get different unit fraction representations is to use the fact that one is equal to one half plus one third plus one sixth. And if we take this fact and divide both sides of it by any positive integer, we get another true statement. So we get that by dividing both sides by two, one half is equal to one fourth plus one sixth plus one twelfth. Or if we divide both sides of the original by three, we get one third is equal to one sixth plus one ninth plus one eighteenth. In doing so, any time we have a fraction, we can change it into the sum of three other fractions. So here, if we take this representation for three-fifths, one-half plus one-tenth, and we use the fact that one-tenth is one-twentieth plus one-thirtieth plus one-sixtieth, again using that initial idea and dividing both sides by ten, we can replace the one-tenth and get three-fifths equals one-half plus one-twentieth plus one-thirtieth plus one-sixtieth. And now we can repeat the process by getting one sixtieth is equal to one over one hundred and twenty plus one over one hundred eighty plus one over three hundred and sixty. Substitute that in for one sixtieth and get a new representation for three fifths: one half plus one twentieth plus one thirtieth plus one over one hundred and twenty plus one over one hundred and eighty plus one over three hundred and sixty. It's probably not hard for you to see that this process can go on forever.